The aftermath of the APC primaries leaves one question unanswered. What is next for the former ministers? And many killed, houses raised as communal crisis breaks out in Kogi State. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakol. Four ministers have become politically stranded, if you'd ask me, after their defeat in the presidential primaries of the All Progressive Congress, APC, which was held in Abuja. Now, former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, eventually won that primary by taking about 60% of the votes and will be flying the flag of the APC in the February 25th, 2023 presidential elections. The ministers who forced uh, or were forced to resign last month after obtaining forms were Emeka Mwajuba, Minister of State for Education, Gotswil Akwabio, Niger Delta Affairs Minister, Ogbunnaya Onu, Science and Technology um, Minister, and Roti Miyamechi, Transportation Minister. And the big question tonight is, what is next for these gentlemen? Well, joining us to discuss this is journalist um, Carl Chinedu and a legal practitioner, Deji Awobiide. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Great. I'll, I'll, I'll start with you, Deji. Um, now, all four of these men who were seemingly forced to resign, and some resigned of their own free will, even before the imbroglio of whether they should stay or not. Um, many people had wondered if it was even a good move in the first instance, looking at their political pedigree. I mean, I'm talking about all of these men that I've mentioned, aside from maybe uh, the transportation minister and uh, the science and technology minister. Uh, let's start from there. How great an idea was it for these men to leave their jobs in pursuit of this presidential bid? Well, thank you, Marianne, uh, for, for the question. Uh, you recall that a few weeks back you had your program, and I did wonder why these uh, ministers were running, uh, unless they had some form of assurance from the president or from somebody I own saying that you know they had um, the confidence of the party to secure the ticket. But now, now that the primaries have come and gone, where it looks very clear to everybody who can see that uh, it was a very ill-advised decision. Um, I mean, uh, only the Minister of Transport was able to muster some votes that came second in the primaries. The others, um, basically, one did not show up in the convention. Um, um, the, the minister, Minister Onu, uh, went on a rant at the convention, but did not secure any votes. Um, God will have you, uh, maybe the wisest of them all, or was able to quickly pitch his tent with the eventual um, party's flag bearer. So I don't know, maybe it was some form of um, um, importance that they attached to, them, to themselves, but clearly, they did not have the political capital or the political muscle to get the party's ticket. So it was a very ill-advised decision. And I just hope that for their sake, that the money that they spent on the, the party's um, form would somehow, some way, be either be refunded to them or be given back to them at a at at reduced um, price. Okay. A compensation of sorts. Well, let me come to you, Carl. Carl, can you hear me? Um, let's look at the second runner up, which is the former governor of River State and, of course, the current, well, former now Minister of Transportation, um, Rosimi Chibike Amechi, who also were, was one of the presidential aspirants on the platform of the APC. Let's start by uh, um, looking at his performance, not just as minister, but let's take a look back at him being governor. Could this have also played a role in his shorty of wanting to run for this office and even taking that leap of leaving his current job? Well, I was saying that the road that the minister that left out for the it was basically a turn up because the beginning of the age of our people, the people of our people, the people of our people, who 
I'm so sorry, Carl. I'm, I'm so sorry. It's very difficult for us to hear you. We're going to try to get you on another line so that we can clearly hear what you have to say. That would make the conversation flow better. So I'm going to come back to you, Deji. Um, same question. Let's look at Chibike Amechi's career and the trajectory. Um, a man who became a speaker uh, in the legislature in his state, moved from there uh, to become a governor of his state. I mean, he's had some form of a steady trajectory, which he also presented um, on the day of the presidential primaries, making a case, in fact, that he had also been two times, uh, you know, governor, two-time governor, a two-time DG for Mr. President. Uh, you know, he seemed to had, have had so much confidence. But now that he's no longer the minister, no longer governor, he does not hold any office uh, and then, of course, let's look at what's happening in the APC in his state. Where does he fall in right now? Well, I think that um, the, um, the former Minister for Transport, uh, uh, Right Honorable Chibuke Amechi, has the credit below that uh, to seek the highest office uh, in the land. I mean, having such a very robust resume as he possesses, uh, nobody can qualify him for aspiring to greater office. However, um, as you know, when it comes to internal affairs of the political party, uh, those decisions that will become the party's flag bearer and the primaries is left for the party to decide. And in this case, the APC opted to um, go through uh, the delegate system, and the person who had the most support from the delegates eventually won, although he came um, a very decent second to um, Ashwa Jibala Tsunubu. Now, uh, having said that, um, right now, the minister is, uh, I wouldn't say he's an orphan, but without a political office, this is somebody who has held a uh, political office since 1999, was speaker for eight years, was governor for eight years, was minister after he left his office as governor. And so he's been in the limelight for, for several years. So uh, this is perhaps a, a, a shock to him that is, is, is nowhere in terms of national politics uh, directly as it used to be. He's no longer a front runner, uh, does not have a seat at the table based on a political office for now. But I reckon that his, um, his journey in the wilderness will not be uh, for too long because I, I, if things go the way the party has planned and if things go the way other people have canvassed, that he be allowed to come back to his office as Minister for Transport to complete all the projects. Uh, you, uh, you, you heard Sheh Usoni say in the past uh, week that he should be allowed to complete all his ongoing projects. And this is one minister who we can say has really done um, well under the uh, Gwari uh, administration. Although the stain on the CV is the Kaduna um, 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 Bomb attack, the train that, attack, yes, attack, yes. attack on, That's the stain on the CV. But aside from that, if you've been to the international airport in Abuja, if you've seen other real projects that are, I mean, being completed, uh, you will see that I mean, he's done a lot. He's done a lot, but uh, he's one of the uh, shining the lights of the Buhari administration. Okay. But as it relates to his political uh, position now, uh, he might need to do some realignment. And you saw that the uh, Ashiwaju uh, visited his house a few a few days back. So I think that some reorganization and alignment will occur to see what, what, what uh, the future portends for um, the former Minister for Transport. Carl, I think now we have you on a clearer line, and um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the uh, transportation, former Transportation Minister. For well, most of the ministers that resigned their appointments to uh, contest the NDC primaries, I will say that it was simply pure uh, opportunism. Because most of, them, most of them were counting on the fact that uh, either would, they would be anointed or because of the clamor and agitation that the governorship should come to the ideal political zone. Stay with me. Uh huh. Go ahead. Wow. But, so it was, uh, it was simply the issue of competence was not there, even though most of them have uh, served in various capacities and. Uh, uh, not really, never really had much of a show for it. But the big question Nigerians should be asking remains this. Most of these guys have been in and out of governance for the past 24 years. 
in the specific instance of Obu Nayano, who has been in government from the military era up till now. I mean, they should, they, they should also, they ought to have a second address, as people will always say. Politics is, is not their main occupation. They should also give way for others to also come and they bring in their competence and also move the country forward. So I don't think that uh, there should be any big deal about what they should do next. They should also go to life. Again, uh, I mean, you can't really say that I mean, again, it's your, pers it's your personal op op opinion to say that, you know, these people should take a seat for others to, you know, you know have a, a fair chance to play in the ring. But then there are people who would tell you that this is, this is something that they do. This is, the fa this is their um, capital in terms of politics, being continuously in the mix. Um, because, I mean, I think Deji made a, a very interesting point. The man who was, supposed to, who was the first to resign and say he had a political ambition did not show up at the uh, Eagle Square to even make a case for that ticket in the first instance. And I'm talking about um, the um, um, Minister of State for, uh, I think, Science and Technology, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he didn't show up. So people would ask, of course, even if he knows how to do his job, Mwajuba, even if he doesn't know how to do his job, uh, or rather if he did his job really well, what about what happens to him in the future in terms of politics? And I asked Deji another question. For a minister, Amechi, who, whose APC in River State is divided, has been unable to um, have any proper um, elections or primaries or congresses because there are two factions in that party. And then, of course, at the national level, whether he has been, you know, um, in meetings or in talks with the flag bearer of the party, that is one on one hand. But what is the political future of Rotimi Amechi? Will he be able to say uh, in the future that I am, um, you know, the father of the APC or I am the leader of the APC in River State, these are the people that I'm gro grooming. Because it's one thing to say, step aside. Who are the people that these people have fathered that they can say, okay, well, I'll step aside and let you run? Carl? Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, if you want to talk about... Uh, see, the problem the most of these uh, guys had at the APC primaries was that they, it, 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 they really got to on the, or discover that they were as the, the, uh, superstars the way they saw, saw themselves. Because, like, uh, in, the, in the instant case of the former governor of River State, Amici, who was speaker for eight years, governor for eight years, leader of APC in River State. But the surprising thing and the, uh, the irony remains that uh, in the past two elections, APC has not been able to shoot candidates in River State. As we speak now, APC is still a match in crisis in River State. So that will also put a question back on his leadership and managerial ability. Okay. In the case, uh, yeah, and in the, in the case of people like Mwajoba and the rest of them, I, I still maintain that these are people that just came out for the election because they believe that, uh, oh, because the climate that should come to the Southeast, oh, they have some the best, best position to take it. None of them came to that contest on their own steam, and that was why they collapsed so, uh, so, so at this money in the primary. Let me come back to you, Deji. Let's talk about um, Goswil Akwabi, who also seems to be having the same situation in Akwaibong State as Rosimia Mechi, where there seems to be some uh, uncertainty for his party and if they would be able to even participate in the elections, being that there are cases that are in court right now. Akwabio, for some, would be a governor who was very um, um, articulate, someone who was able to do certain things and put a Kwaibom state on the map. Some people might say different. Um, but he's also a very good orator. You know, he speaks very well. He's able to, um, you know, get people to um, join his team. But we were unable to see that happen uh, in his bid for uh, presidency. Again, some people would say, uh, just like Carl, they were just there because they thought that, you know, uh, their level of, um, uh, let's say, fame would... One, one way or the other, get them the ticket. But for Anakwabio now, who's also almost on the same boat for, uh, with former um, Minister Rotimi Amechi, um, do you see him playing his way back into the game um, uh, as compared to a Rotimi Amechi? Well, I think as it relates to um, Governor Godwill Akwabio, 
He was the first person to declare his support for the eventual flag bearer of the party. Mm -hmm. And that move was a very strategic move. Um, perhaps he saw the handwriting on the wall that he would not be able to um, get the party's uh, nomination. But having played that hand, of course, it also means that if should APC go ahead and win the general elections, it would be in good stead to uh, at least lay some claim to the uh, party's victory. I haven't said the ball rolling for the various governors and other, and other aspirants who threw their weight behind Ashwa Jubala Tenumbu. So for Apabio, I think, well, while on the national stage, he may not have uh, an office as minister, he's still very much relevant in the South South. And uh, ditto for um, Right Honorable Chibuke Ameji. They both are very relevant politicians in their respective states. Uh, for for, for, governor, for um, Minister Ameji, the problem that he has is that he has a very formidable opposition in Governor Yeson Wiki. Which mm. uh, Governor Wiki has proven twice that it's not a pushover. And don't forget also that uh, Governor Ameji is always quick to remind you that Governor Wiki was his uh, uh, mentee, uh, so to speak. So, of course, it's the case where every tactic that the minister has in his, uh, in his ass now, uh, Wiki has almost twice of that. So that, and he also has the power of incumbency going for him. So that's why I think he's been handicapped in rivers. But uh, Governor Fabio has not been so handicapped in Aquaibon. He's still a very, very prominent position in Aquaibon state. However, you will understand that when it comes to politics, there are a lot of interests at play, and those interests are at play in Aquaibom, and that's why I have several court cases. Mm. Even though at the convention it declared that 93 delegates of Aquaibom would vote for Bachelor uh, Tinobu, but unfortunately, because of the court injunction that was served at the convention, uh, they could not um, really uh, add their votes Participate. to the tally mm. of, or exactly of uh, the APC flag bearer. So, but it just tells that it commands the loyalty of these people. And it's still very much relevant in uh, national politics. Um, unfortunately, um, it may have to go back home because a lot of the times when they when these politicians go to the national stage, they forget that they need to also have that back and forth. Mm. And I think that is that, that's what is lacking in both the case of um, Governor Fabio and Governor Amici. But for Governor Amici, I still insist that he has a very formidable opposition who has the power of incumbency going for him. I do not see that if Governor Amici leaves office. In 2023, I think that it will have a more level playing field mm. to be able to ex, um, expand these political ideals in River State. Okay, Carl, you, you are in River State. I, I, I just want to point to both gentlemen. Notice that these ministers who stepped down in pursuit of their presidential bid were from the South. Um, I'm talking about Obonayaonu, um, Mwajuba, um, Akpabio, and Rosimi Amechi. Now, last week, a Rivers politician, um, Tonye Princewill, did speak about Tinubu's win as a lesson to the South. And not just the South, he talked about the Southeast, he talked about the South-South and the Middle Belt, saying that, uh, that there are lots of lessons we need to learn from the politicking of Asiwaju Abola Ahmed Tinubu. Do you agree with Tony Cole uh, that there's a lot that the South needs to learn from uh, Tinubu's politicking? Yeah, absolutely. I, I quite agree with that uh, position. Uh, because uh, what played out in, uh, in the APC primaries was uh, the fact that Carl, are you there? I think that we lost Carl uh, again. Carl, are you there? Can you hear me? I think we lost that connection, unfortunately. Uh, the connection uh, on his end is really bad. Back to you, Deji. Um, so, Deji, just as I said, there's a lot to look at. There are lots to, there's a lot to learn from what has transpired. Again, like I said, these four gentlemen are from the South, the Southeast and, of course, the South-South. And we see that they seem, some people would say they've lost out. They shot themselves in the foot. Some people would say, well, it was strategic. Some who have, you know, uh, declared allegiance for the flag bearer, some of them would say they're winning. But what Toye Cole said about the fact that there's a lot more that we need to learn in terms of alliances and uh, 
political pragmatism. Um, do you share the same sentiment? Well, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think what is said is very apt, Mr. Constance, because what you would see is that uh, Ashwa Dibala Tunubu is, some, is a politician who has been on the scene for well over 30 years. Um, he has several mentees, several political uh, godsons and goddaughters um, that he can point to, uh, many of, of whom he has elevated to the limelight, who have played a very prominent role in our national development. So, uh, and he's a man who has built bridges across the Niger, um, far north. He has his backing there, he has his followership there. Even the title, Jagaban, is the, a title that he, get, he got from the north. Uh, Jagaban Bogu is from the north. So that tells you that he's a very diverse uh, politician who is also very, very um, uh, calculative in his approach, very pragmatic politician. And as when it all seemed as though it was not going to get a ticket, I mean, if you, if you follow social media, um, you will see that on Twitter, a lot of people were just saying his ambition was the arrival. Uh, they played up the chances of uh, the vice president and other people's chances have been anointed by the, by, by the president. And uh, nobody really saw um, Ashiwaju getting the ticket eventually. As a matter of fact, a lot of people were waiting for the convention so that they can be put to shame. Uh, but eventually, it turned out to be the reverse. It turned out to be the eventual flag bearer. Um, given, despite the concerns about his health, uh, he was still able to pull off um, the great escape. And I think that his rant at Abekuta perhaps will be the most historic rant in the history of Nigeria, because that rant eventually, I think, forced the hand of so many people. And eventually, you saw that he got uh, an, an overwhelming uh, support and delegates. Well, you may say that those delegates were financially satisfied to cast their votes for him. But all the other aspirants also had the same level playing field. They could have also gone ahead to do what needed to be done to secure the ticket. Uh, like I said, uh, did, did, those uh, of them who were... Deji, I, 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 I'm not disagreeing. I'm just curious. When you say they had the same level playing field, did they stand a chance uh, against the Tinubu? When you say they could do what he did, what exactly did well, he do uh, that they could have done? So, so, so what I mean is, if you pick up a form uh, to run for the office of the president, that's the highest office in the land, you must believe in your chances. You must believe that you have the same clout, uh, the, same, the same persona, the same charisma, the same pockets to be able to win the nomination. So uh, it would be foolhardy to pick up a form knowing that you had, you had no chance. I wouldn't say that um, Governor Amechi did not feel as if he had a chance. I'm sure he felt that he had a good chance of picking, of, of picking the party's uh, nomination. Ditto for the vice president. I must, they must have believed that they stood a chance, or they must have believed that the delegates were people of conscience. Like Pastor Sudebakari said, he said he sent out book SMS to all the delegates. I mean, he believed in, that, in the ability of delegates to see beyond financial motives and vote for him based on his passion for the country. And I believe that even all the other aspirants too would also say the same, that they are very passionate about the country and that they will, if given the chance, they will take the country to greater heights. So if you pick up a form to run for office, then you must really believe in your chances. Otherwise, it was a foolish thing to do. Okay. Uh, but those of them who, who felt that, you know, they, 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 they could no longer, have seen the writing on the wall, could not wrestle the ticket from the Jagaban, they decided to step down their ambitions. Uh, Governor Fayemi of Egypt State, that's my state, he did mention that he had a young man has a long way to go. And uh, okay. he also had the former speaker of the House of, uh, of Representatives, um, Mr. Rose, Mr. Dimitri Bankoli, saying also that he's also a young man and wanted to prostrate from the Jagaban. So a lot of people, were, a lot of them looked at you know, their current state and, their, and the future and aligned and realigned their position. Okay. You know, uh, some of them you need to step down, like Pastor Bakari got zero votes, he did not step down. Uh, I think he got zero votes or one vote. I don't, I, I, I'm not very certain now. But he also went on a round, a national round, as to justice and conscience and all of those things. But politics is politics. And okay. I know politics is a special kind of politics uh, that requires you to not only uh, have deep pockets, it also requires you to have uh, friends. In, in, across, in high board, across every, okay. every, every, every zone of the country. Okay, finally, I, I hope that, Carl, you can hear me. Just to wrap this up, um, Deji has said that, you know, a lot of them 
had level playing field, even though um, Obunayanu had come out to say he felt that there was no justice in terms of power being ceded to the south or the southeast. But do you see any mass movement out of the APC or do you think that there has been some calm within the party and that maybe wounds have been patched and, and people are holding hands and kumbayaing their way to 2023? Carl, can you hear me? Unfortunately, Carl cannot hear us. Well, I want to say thank you, Deji, uh, for being part of the conversation. Deji Abu Biyide is a legal practitioner, and of course, Carl Chinedu is a journalist. And uh, thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thank you for having me. All right. And on that note, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking with the information minister in Kogi State. There have been several clashes uh, within the state, which has also led to the loss of lives and property. We'll be talking about it after this break.